Hey everyone, this is Eric. And today we're going beyond SketchUp Desktop so that we can use V-Ray to create what you can see behind me here is referred to as a clay or styrofoam render. So the first question is, why might we want a clay render? You know, if we're going to put all this effort into using V-Ray and learning V-Ray and getting these great photorealistic materials and stuff like that, then why just go ahead and wipe it out? Well, I'm going to pop over here really quick. I want to show you just um, what I'm comparing to. Now, this is a great render. I love it. But it's also really finished. So when you have a completely done render, it doesn't leave a lot of room for, uh, like, let's say, the client's imagination. So in this case, this would be like the end product. Sometimes we'll render earlier in the process to maybe compare options, or maybe we'll use it as the base to diagram off of, or we just want to push the form forward. Like we don't want to get hung up on the materials. We just want them to see the form and the shape and how it's developing. Well, clay render, I'm going to pop back over here. A clay render is perfect for that. So we're going to do that now. Okay, I don't need this. This is the finished product, but we're going to do that together. So I'm going to pop over to my SketchUp. I've got this great model here. This is Denver Union Station, if you haven't seen this before. And I've got my V-Ray toolbar up. So I'm going to start in the Asset Editor. And in my settings, I haven't really changed anything here. I have changed just switching off progressive for this demo so that things go quick and then dropping the quality down to low. And I always use the denoiser just out of habit. So just want to let you know, other than that, we're at factory default settings. So what I want to do is firstly start with what's called material override. So this is going to basically take um, over, it does exactly what it says it's going to do. It's going to override all the materials in the model and then it's going to um, turn them this sort of grayish color. Now we could use white, but they use this gray because white is really intense and you'll see why in just a second. So let's kick off uh, a test render, move this out of the way maybe, and kick off a quick test render just so we can see what that first setting does, just that one setting, materials override. And while that's going, um, I can say that you can see that uh, there's no materials in this model. So that's exactly where I wanted to go. So now that's the first stage. Now we're not there yet. We've got a couple more steps to do to kind of get that um, almost like diagrammatic, like a model look, like a physical model, like you'd build out of um, either styrofoam or, or foam core or something like that. So the first thing I want to do here is actually I've got a couple different options. They're, the shadows here are really crisp. Now I want to sort of break those down and soften those so that you can't really see exactly where the light source is coming from. Second thing I want to do is I want to knock out the sky because the blue here, I want to pretend as if this is all diagrammatic. This isn't the real world. So I want to get rid of that sky. So let's, I have to decide which one I want to do first. Um, doesn't really matter the order of operations here. I'm going to just replace the sky. Now there's a few different ways to do this. This is kind of a shortcut way. I'm using my screenshot tool um, here in oh, Mac OS X. And I'm just going to grab um, something white. Doesn't matter what it is. I'm just grabbing a little white square from my model. And then in your, if you open up this slide out on the right, this is basically your editing uh, panel within the VFB. So I'm going to go ahead and click plus. And what I want to do is I want to add what's called a background. And it's going to ask me what, where do I want to browse? What do I want to use for my background? So I'm going to path to, if I go over to my desktop, there should be a white box here, which is just my screenshot. I'm going to click OK. And right there, what it's doing is replacing the sky with something white. Now, the results may, if you have a tree with lots of leaves and stuff, it may, you know, you may get some fuzzy edges. So just kind of keep that in mind. The shortcut method that I'm using may not always work. For me in this model, in this demo, it works pretty well. So I'm going to go with that. The next thing I want to do is sort of brighten this image up a little bit. So while I'm in this editing panel, I'm going to add one more layer. Um, this is going to be called, this is, these are correction layers. So I'm going to grab exposure. So what the exposure does, it basically just shortcuts having to go in and tweak lights and tweak camera settings and, and change the um, exposure within the camera. In this case, I'm just going to overwrite it. I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to push that exposure up as bright as I want. Now, two things are, well, one thing's happening here is as I do that, I'm blowing my image out. And if you don't know what blowing your image out means, basically, if I come up to view color clamping and say force color clamping, all of these colors that are showing up is kind of pixelated. So if I push this, the exposure down, you can see those pixelations change. And if I push it up, anything that's kind of colored means it's being blown out. It's overexposed. 
So I'm going to just turn that off. I don't need that right now. That was just to demo what that means by being blown out. So in this case, it's really blown out. Now you can pull your highlight burn slider down to compensate. In this case, I just pull that back down and you can see that it's, everything's going to balance out. So do you just find that sweet spot? A little bit of blowout's probably okay, but you may, uh, going down too much maybe is too much. So you just want to find sort of what feels right for you. And as you adjust the exposure, you're also going to want to come back and adjust the highlight burn as well. Now I want to go over to the shadows. Like I said, the shadows are a little crisp. Now that's in a different setting. That is not here in the VFB. That is going to be um, over here in our sunlight settings. So under lights and under sun, we are going to change what is called the size multiplier. So the size multiplier means how big is the sun. So the bigger the sun, the softer the shadows. So in this case, I might really push this and exaggerate it. I could try 10 and see what that does. Let's go ahead and just run a render here and see what 10 does to the shadows, just so that we can kind of compare. If I wanted to save time, I probably should have done what's called a render region. So I might do that on the next one here. I'm just going to sort of maybe just render the corner of this model just to kind of keep things going quickly. A render region is pretty cool because then I can just render this. I don't have to render the whole thing. So that's good. You can see that that line, that edge of the shadow, if I zoom in, is already softening. But I want to push that even further. So I'm going to go really exaggerated, something like 100. And that might be way too much, but we'll see. It's kind of fun. You can previews here a little bit, so you can kind of see what that looks like here. I'm going to press render one more time. It's important because I really want to sort of break down um, like where those shadows are coming from and really soften it like you, like you would see more in a diagrammatic model. And that's the result that's I, I'm liking there. So that's cool. I'm going to get rid of that render region. The next step here, and this is kind of optional, but if you want to come in and add lines to your model, traditionally I would save this from here, and then I would export my lines from SketchUp, from my SketchUp model here, and then layer them together in something like Photoshop. But what's great about some of the, the newer versions of V-Ray, which it's not that new anymore, but if you're on an older, older version, is this thing called Contours. So if you turn Contours on, you can play with the line color or the line thickness. I'm just going to leave this as default right now because I kind of want to see what that looks like. So I'm going to press my button here one more time. And what you should see is the edges in your model now are going to show up in the render. Now, again, this is just one of those options that you have to decide whether or not it's the look that you're going for. And I'll give you an example here. As this is rendering, I'm going to slide this over so that I can open up my history panel. And what I want to do is I want to show you the before and after in a specific area of what those edges might do for me. So I'm going to kind of zoom in. Maybe in this area, you can see you've got these kind of vault or ribs that are holding up this canvas structure. And then, of course, you've got all this detail in the Union Station building itself. So I'm going to compare this one to what we did before with no edges. So if you just go back and forth, you can see that you lose a lot of detail when you don't have those edges. So again, it's just a preference. Now, I'm going to come in here and say, well, you know what? Those edges are a little too intense. So what I want to do is pull back on them a little bit. So let's take the AB comparison off. We'll leave my history open because I might want to compare um, these darker edges to a little bit lighter one. I can play with the line color if I want. Or in this case, what I might do is just play with the opacity. So if I type in 0.5 instead of 1, basically I'm making it 50% um, of its full saturation or opacity. So I'll click Render one more time because I want to be able to compare. I just kind of want you to see what that does. And I'm I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of using big numbers here because I want to show the difference. But of course, if you feel like you want a more subtle difference, then you just use that number. I'm kind of purposefully, um, you know, using sort of a bigger number, like going from 100% to 50, right? Maybe something like 75 is going to be a little bit better. So I'm going to pop in here A and B again. And you can see the difference between 50% opacity and 100. So now I'm getting those edges in. I can see the edges. It looks great. Uh, it's a little bit lighter. It's not so intense. I think that's more of the look that I'm wanting to go for. Again, maybe that's too light. Maybe I went too far. Maybe 65, 70% would have been better. But you know, again, we all have our preferences. 
So there's one more thing I want to do before I switch my settings and render a high-res uh, version. These are all test renders that I'm doing. And if I go back into my VFB, you'll notice what we're doing here is just staying pretty much inside of the main render settings other than that little sun uh, adjustment that we did. And I want to go to what's called global illumination. And if you expand that, there's a little um, tab here next to whether it's on or off. And that basically means advanced settings. So I want to open up the advanced settings. I'm not sure why they hide this in the advanced settings, because I think this is a pretty um, useful setting as a default, which is called ambient occlusion. So ambient occlusion is used in game rendering a lot. Basically, it's going to provide, it's going to put a lot of detail in where two surfaces or two corners come together. It's going to create sort of an indirect illumination. It's going to highlight, it's going to make sort of corners darker, and um, it's going to make it a little bit more pronounced. So I want to turn that on. And then the numbers, I'm not quite sure. I don't have a magic number for this. If you go too high, it's going to be too intense. If you keep it low, you might not even notice it. I'm going to pick a number like five just to kind of play it safe. So I want to push this up a little bit. And the radius, um, it just basically means that when those shadows come together, like how sharp is it? So how, how big is the blend mode on that? I'm going to push that up to something like 50. Again, I'm just kind of guessing and playing around. If I don't like it, I'll just go back in and adjust those numbers. So let's render that hopefully one last time. I might have to make an adjustment on those that ambient occlusion setting. And then um, because this is you know the fun of V-Ray, if you compare this to, say, Enscape, they do have this setting as a style where you just click it. And it basically applies all the settings we're doing automatically to the rendering. Now, that's fine. I think that's sometimes better just to have a one-click button. But you know, like everything, V-Ray just gives you just that extra bit of control that you can dial it in in a way that the other programs do not. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go A, B, A being the one with ambient occlusion, B being the one without. Slide this over. And I don't know where the best way to where to show this, but I'm going to kind of focus maybe on where the shadows are. So because it's indirect illumination, it's not the sun shadows. You'll notice that there's no shade here normally because it's under uh, the sh sun is up above this. But if I pull this out, you can see that it's creating almost like it's casting its own shadow. And that's what I mean by indirect illumination, where like the corners of geometry come together. And so if you zoom in even more, it's a little pixelated because it's a low res test, but you can see that it's also making the where all the joint lines pronounced. So that may make it so that you don't need uh, to rely so much on the contours or the edges. Again, this is a preference. I kind of think about it like cooking. Some people might think, oh, that's too intense. Uh, I, I wouldn't use that. And other people might say, actually, that that is great. That really makes everything more pronounced and easier to see. So. As always, uh, every time you do a render or you change a setting, I would say go back in and look at look at your settings, um, your adjustment correction layers, because like we added this exposure. Well, we did that before I added the ambient inclusion, before I added the contours. So you may want to come back in here, double check that. If it's getting too dark, I can push that up just a little bit more. Again, I'm going to compensate by pulling my highlight burn down. And I think maybe I went too far in the exposure. I really want to find that right sort of balance between um, the clay look, but not so light that it's pushing my detail and losing my detail. And I think it's right about there. Now, I like the way that looks. So I'm going to close my editing panel. From here, I would go into my settings, switch to a higher resolution output, and I'd kick that out, and I'd be done. It, that's, that's it. This looks awesome. And it really. Uh, the steps that I showed you, yes, it's a multiple step process, but once you've done that a couple of times, it's really, really uh, fast to do it again. In fact, you can even save these settings here, these corrections, you can even save these to a file and call it clay. So instead of doing this every single time, like I did, um, you can just load those settings back in. So if that's a concern of yours, just save it to a file somewhere, load these corrections, load the settings in, and then your clay model will basically render um, itself. You won't have to do this every single time. So that's it for how to take a already good looking model, strip that detail back, and make it more conceptual or diagrammatic that then you can use to put text on top of or color on top of, call attention to a particular part. 
who knows? It's up to you, right? We show you how to do it, and it's up to you to apply this however you want or however your job uh, needs require. So I'm going to stop there. As always, I want to say thanks for watching. I want to say also, don't forget to share, like, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, make sure because we just added some new videos. Um, you'll notice that Beyond Desktop, this is a new series for us and you don't want to miss this. So make sure you're subscribed and of course, comment. I read these comments. I go back in, I check it. You got a question, a problem, uh, you want more information. I'll read it and I'll follow up with you. We'll keep the conversation going there. So again, thank you. See you next time.